green hydrogen seems to be having its moment despite Donald Trump governments around the world are putting in tens of billions of dollars into it even oil companies are making bets and analysts are calling it the missing piece in the clean energy puzzle especially for industries that cannot run on batteries or sunshine alone but the future of green hydrogen may not be decided in silicon valley or even beijing for that matter it might come down to what is happening in a factory just outside of bangalore india where a little known american startup called omium is building sleek modular machines the size of a fridge designed to split water into hydrogen and oxygen using nothing but renewable electricity omium's unique technology called pem or proton exchange membrane electrolyzers are compact scalable and fast becoming the system of choice for green hydrogen production but what is even more surprising is where they're being built who is buying them and how quickly the market is changing india which has long been seen as a follower in clean tech manufacturing is now positioning itself as a global hub for electrolyzer production with omium leading the charge because india has the perfect mix of sun wind and manufacturing muscle which might just give us a second chance at becoming energy independent so this is a story about the race to decarbonize sectors like steel fertilizer and shipping and the coming together of american innovation indian manufacturing and a fuel that could change everything but can india really lead the global green hydrogen race and will omium become the company to take it there Welcome to Daybreak, a business podcast from the Ken. I'm your host Nikta Sharma and I don't chase the news cycle. Instead, every day of the week, my colleague Rahil Philippos and I will come to you with one business story that is worth understanding and worth your time. Today is Monday, the 7th of April. dive into omium let's go back to the basics a little bit hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe it is also clean fuel so when you burn it you get water not smoke but here's the catch most of the hydrogen that we use today called gray hydrogen comes from fossil fuels like natural gas and this process releases a ton of carbon dioxide green hydrogen meanwhile is the same stuff but it is made using renewable energy and water it is clean in and out and here's how it works you pass electricity through water in a process called electrolysis this splits the water into hydrogen and oxygen if the electricity comes from a solar or wind power the hydrogen is 100% green sounds perfect right but there is a problem because it is expensive really expensive green hydrogen can cost anywhere from 5 to 7 dollars per kilogram Grey hydrogen on the other hand costs just a little more than $1. So the challenge is how do you bring the cost down? And that is where technology and scale come in. And that's where Omium enters the picture. Omium is an American startup, but it is betting big on India. In 2021, they set up a sprawling gigafactory on 8 acres of land near Bangalore in a place called Doda Balapur. My colleague Shrishti Achar who visited the factory says that from the outside it looks like any other modern factory but inside it is building the future PEM electrolyzers these machines convert water into green hydrogen unlike the bulkier and older alkaline electrolyzers PEM or proton exchange membrane electrolyzers are compact modular and way more efficient Here's what Rasool Agha Tehrani, the company's chief marketing and strategy officer, told my colleague Shrishti. And I'm quoting, We picked a form factor similar to a car. Why? Because the tools and the talent to build cars already exists in India. So each electrolyzer is like a cabinet. Seven cabinets make up what they call an island. And depending on your needs, you can add more or fewer units, just like building blocks. So, it is simple, scalable, 
and smart. To find out why India is the perfect place to do this, stay tuned. You see, as it turns out, India checks all the right boxes. Sunshine, yes. Wind power, plenty. A booming auto parts industry, yes. Especially in the Chennai and Bangalore belt. And more importantly, India has not yet logged into one kind of hydrogen technology. Like China, for example, leads in alkaline electrolyzers. But the green hydrogen game is still wide open. India also has a massive $2 billion subsidy program for green hydrogen. And that is helping big players like NTPC and M-Steel launch projects that were unthinkable just a few years ago. Paul Dianora, Omium's chief commercial officer, told us, and I'm quoting, in 2022, projects were just 10 to 20 megawatts. Now, we are seeing 100 to 800 megawatt projects being announced. This is exponential growth. So now, let us talk about the tech a little bit. PEM electrolyzers are pricier than alkaline ones, mostly because they use iridium, one of Earth's rarest metals. But PEM also has its advantages. It is smaller, it is more efficient, and it is faster to start and stop, which makes it perfect for pairing with renewable power that is intermittent by nature. Omium's current model uses 49 kilowatt hours of electricity to produce 1 kilogram of hydrogen. And that is already 5 to 6 kilowatts better than alkaline systems. And their earlier product was 56 kilowatt hours. So you see, they've already made major efficiency gains. And it is only going to get better. Their next gen product, Mark II, which is set to launch this year, promises even more efficiency translating to lower hydrogen costs. But despite all this promise of technology, the challenges remain, which is cost. Until green hydrogen gets down to about $1 to $2 per kg, it is going to be tough to compete with fossil fuels. And that is why Omium is focusing on markets where there is both policy pressure and infrastructure in place. Take Europe, for example. The Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism punishes companies that import carbon-intensive goods. And that makes green hydrogen more attractive. Japan, South Korea and Singapore are also pushing to source green hydrogen from countries like India. Which is why, for Omium, this is a huge opportunity. They've already replaced competitors in at least four North American projects, according to their executives. They expect two-thirds of their revenue to come from Europe and India by 2026. But Omium is not trying to be everything to everyone. They are betting on flexibility, efficiency and a modular design that can scale from 5 to 500 megawatts without reinventing the wheel. They are also leaning into energy independence. Dianora says that India's power supply, while improving, is still unpredictable. Green hydrogen can act as backup fuel for data centers, refineries and fertilizer plants. And here is a kicker. Omium system can connect directly to solar panels, bypassing the grid entirely. And that can shave 7 to 10% off the initial investment and improve overall efficiency by another 5 to 7%, which is huge. So will Omium succeed? The company raised $250 million last year. It is working on massive deals with Indian giants like NTPC and its second-gen product is just months away. But the real test is going to be scaling up. You see, green hydrogen is still in its infancy. But like solar panels 15 years ago, the tipping point could come very soon. Aga Tehrani actually puts it best. He says in solar, mono cells were once expensive. Now, they're everywhere. We think PEM will follow the same path. So, if he's right, Omium could be at the center of a clean energy breakthrough. And India, it might just go from importer to exporter of the world's cleanest fuel. That is all for today. Thank you for tuning in. And if you enjoyed this episode, please do share it with people who you think are curious about the future of clean energy. 